Well, we're off to the narrow gauge convention in Sacramento. Again, still smart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something really, really unusual today has nothing to do with the narrow gauge convention has to do with uh, mostly something from my childhood, but also our favorite restaurant in Carson City, Red's 395 Club. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it is just the funnest place to go, and uh, it's full of all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, it came highly recommended by a law enforcement <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah, sort of, uh, we got pulled over is the thing. And uh, long story short, he, uh, he said we should go down here to Red's 395 Club and we'd have a wonderful dinner. And he was right. He was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. But it's so reminiscent of some of these old places from the 50s and 60s. Uh, one in particular for me, uh, oh, check this out. An actual steamroller. Oh my. From Carson City. Carson City, you know. And this thing, I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> I bet it goes fast. <laughs> I thought it was steampunk at first, but no, it's a real live, honest to God thing, whatever the thing is. <laughs> but the place is just fun, 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 full of fun, fun, goofy, weird, wonderful, wonderful things. Antiques. Yes. Bric a brac. Oh. But this is the place that it reminds me of, which no longer exists at all. No. The Liberty Bell Saloon and Restaurant in Reno. Yes. Virginia Street. So kind of down the street from the 395 Club. But back in the 50s and 60s, this is it in the 50s, and this is how I remember it. Ah. It was, it was out of town. I mean, it was way out of town. Eventually, it was in the middle of town. But... <laughs> When we used to go there, it was out in the middle of a grassy meadow surrounded by cows and trees. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and by the late 60s, it was surrounded by more buildings and eventually it ended up in the parking lot of the Civic Center. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so, uh, what can you say? But bit by bit, uh, Marshall Fry, the guy that ran the place, just added more and more and more junk to it. Oh dear. Until the place was just this massive, massive junkyard of wonderful, wonderful things. And my uncle, Paul, Paul Hopkinson, he would take us there. He was a dealer at Harold's Club. But the, the really cool thing they had here was the world's first slot machine. Good heavens, serious? Serious. Well, ah. uh, Marshall, uh, Marshall and Frank, who ran the place, their grandfather invented the slot machine. And they had his prototype in here. Oh, dear. And they were collecting gambling machines. There were hundreds and hundreds of slot machines, but this is, this is their grandfather's slot machine. The world's very first slot machine. Oh, nice. Ran on nickels. <laughs> So it had the usual three tumblers that we're all used to seeing, and it had Liberty Bells that went around, hence the name Liberty Bell. And then he had a few other little symbols in there that, were, that he took off playing cards, uh, hearts and diamonds and clubs. Uh, uh, and, and so if you got three in a row, nickels would pop out down here. Nice. And that was the breakthrough because nobody had to manage this thing. It could just sit in the corner and make money. <laughs> Well, needless to say, it, it revolutionized gambling, it didn't sure it? sure did. <laughs> and uh, the deal was they'd split the money with the, the location. If it was in a restaurant, a club, hotel, or whatever, they'd get half. And uh, the slot machine company would get half. So this is Charles Fry, ah. the, the guy who invented the slot machine. He lived in San Francisco. And he made a deal with the Mills Company. Mills would help produce them. Mills was out of Chicago, but they opened a plant there in San Francisco. And they were making slot machines, and they were making money. I'll bet. <laughs> Here's what the, the slot machine looked like on display inside the restaurant. It was in kind of a case, so nobody could steal it and run off with it. But Marshall Fry was collecting all kinds of slot machines and all that other junk that was around the restaurant. And a lot of the slot machines were slot machines that his grandfather had invented. And a lot of those were the prototype machines as well. Here's a later version of the Liberty Bell, still runs on nickels, just a little more sophisticated a looking. A bit more, yes. Looking a little bit more like the slot machine that we're used to but he very quickly added an attachment to this thing that would dispense chewing gum. Oh, fun. 
And the reason for this was a lot of city states uh, passed laws against gambling in a direct response to the slot machine. Oh boy. People losing all their money. And so over here, he added this little gum dispenser. And on those machines, nickels would no longer come out of the little chute. Instead, packs of gum. Don't pop. blow it. <laughs> Don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've lost my train of thought now. They were fruit gum. It was a bubble gum. <laughs> and it, in fact, he called his company the Bell Fruit Gum for Liberty Bell and uh, the Bell Fruit Gum Company. And he ended up making as much money off his gum as he did off his slot machines. And then he added new pictures to the reels uh, for the flavors of gum that you might win. So he put cherries and plums and lemons and uh, stuff like that. No and, blackjack. Uh, no blackjack. <laughs> well, and he created a new logo for his gum that was just a black bar that said Bell Fruit Gum. And the bar became the thing that you wanted to get was the black bar. And, and these are all the symbols that we know so well today, the black bar and all the different pictures of the fruit. I bet people don't know that they represented the flavors of gum. I had no idea. That he made. And then his logo <laughs> for his gum company, the Bell Fruit Gum Company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my oh, heavens. Oh, heavens. And, of course, he kept the, the Liberty Bell logo as well on yes. the machines. Now, if you want a bunch of gum, it's like, what are you going to do with that? So most of the bars would let you sell the gum back to them, hence turning it back into real live gambling. Oh, sneaky. So you'd take your 50 packs of gum back over to the bar and, and get 50 nickels. There you go. <laughs> And this is the Mills Novelty Company that manufactured the machines, and that's their their big manufacturing plant on the, the his letterhead there that was there in San Francisco. Okay. Isn't that that's cool? That's really cool. And it's become a, a landmark in San Francisco. They've put up this plaque to uh, dedicate that spot to where the Liberty Bell Slot Machine Company stood in San Francisco. So that's pretty cool. Charles definitely considered himself a, a San Franciscan through and through, loved the city and loved living there. But as we all know, uh, living in San Francisco at the turn of the century mm, had a downside. Uh, yes, it sure did. Because there was something about to happen that did not go well. So in 1906, the city was laid bare. Mm -hmm. The earthquake came and the fire came and it destroyed everything, including the Mills Company. This is City Hall. Oh my goodness. Just devastation. And uh, Charles, uh, I, I can't even imagine emotionally what he was going through. He lost his company, he lost his home, he lost his city. This was the big hotel in San Francisco, the Palace Hotel. And if you wanted to put on the dog, you stayed at the palace right up to the point where the palace fell down. Oh, gee. But Charles, uh, well, he liberated some bits and pieces from the hotel. Just uh, souvenirs, I guess. And so uh, the kids, the grandkids ended up with them, Frank and Marshall, and they integrated them into the restaurant. Oh, that's so neat. Isn't that cool? So the doors off the palace were the doors on the saloon. So this is Charles later in life after he rebuilt the company and of course they rebuilt San Francisco and went back to the business of making lots and lots and lots of money off of uh, gambling machines. <laughs> and then uh, some, oh uh, gee, 30 years later or something, the grandkids ended up with the slot machines and opened up the Liberty Bell Saloon in Reno. And then my cousin Paul ends up becoming friends with Marshall and takes us over here. And as kids, we, you know, and Marshall would take us around and give us the chef's tour of the kitchen. These were some of the earlier machines. This is what a gambling machine looked like before the invention of the slot machine. Kind of a wheel of fortune affair. Uh, these are later ones that would actually pay out in cash. The earlier ones still required a dealer. And uh, again, uh, Charles Fry's big invention were these automated machines that would just pay you out. So nobody had to supervise them. But look at all the different variations. That is crazy. These are all variations on the Wheel of Fortune machines that had been around before the slot machine. And then, of course, 
his original slot machine. Wow. And uh, some other Mills machines. There was a, a Mills Nickelodeon in the bar, too. Wow, that's cool. Now, these are 50 cent tokens that they made. Oddly enough, in the 1960s, 50 cent pieces vanished and they needed something to run the slot machines on. Ah. But when they dumped the silver standard, everybody grabbed up all the silver 50 cent pieces and you couldn't get them and nobody could play the slot machines. So they just went ahead and made tokens. There you go. And uh, got a little crap for it because you could run these 50 cent pieces in any old machine that took <laughs> 50 cent. Uh, you know, so there was a, a secret service was not impressed. No. Uh, it, but isn't that kind of neat? So these have become very collectible. You will find them on eBay from time to time. But isn't that cool? That is awesome. And of course, this is a, a matchbook. You know, I, I had to grab up all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, I imagine so. But isn't that neat? That's that's a, a matchbook. One of the things that they were best known for were their calendars. Oh, there you go. And so they'd reprint these old calendars from the turn of the century, and they'd just find years when the dates lined up. Ah. So it would still work for the current year, even though this is a 1918 calendar, but... It came out in like 1973 or something. So it would work for 1973, even though it's a 1918. And I always thought that was really neat. And, and they mailed me one every year. They mailed me my calendar. Ah. Right up to the point where they went out of business. <laughs> oh, she. And unfortunately, um, after uh, Marshall passed away and the family tried running it, and they said, you know, we're sitting on a couple of million dollars worth of slot machines and stuff. Let's just sell it. So they tried to sell the whole thing as one giant collection, but there were no takers for that, unfortunately. So I believe the whole thing just ended up on eBay. Oh, as and all things do. I'm sure the original slot machine the family kept and, and mm -hmm. all the prototypes. So, well, we had an interesting evening there in Carson. This is our hotel room. <laughs> yes, looking out over the town. <laughs> looking at just up the street from the 395 Club. But the 395 Club is just, it's a hoot, and we always have to go oh, there. I love it. And I have to tell everybody there how it reminds me of the Liberty Bell Saloon down in Reno. There you go. Because <laughs> it does, and it's its just cool. And I'd still like to know what the heck this thing so is. So if anybody knows what that is, yeah, comment jump, below. Jump into the comments mm -hmm. and, and let us know, because we haven't a clue. No. <laughs> but it's neat, whatever it is. Well, there you go, the 395 Club, and more importantly, the the Liberty Bell Saloon in Reno, Nevada. Isn't that fun? Isn't that just fun? Well, if you haven't been over to the channel and subscribed, here comes your golden opportunity. The blue button. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday stuff. Yes. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>